oh my god i'm like missing one week of this podcast it's like i've never ever done it before oh, coming back I weirdly like i sat down it was my lips started quivering i'm also just like so physically uncomfortable like there's something in my eye my pants are fitting horribly it literally looks like i'm wearing a full diaper no it's L- dead. look no look i'm not even kidding and these are right out of the um wash so it's not like i've been wearing them for a while there's always diaper <laughs> i don't know what to say it's so frustrating in every one of my pants because I don't really have any sort of butt. <laughs> Make pants for girls with no butts. It's not like we exist. Do, yeah oh my god that's what make pants for girls with no exactly. butt. exactly you've been saying that i have been it's like listen the biggest I'm, advocate for girls with no butt i look i just i always look like i'm wearing a diaper unless i'm wearing leggings which i don't want to be like wearing leggings because i have no butt i don't know what to say to this <laughs> argument like I'm, I'm pretty like <laughs> you can just sympathize brooke you have the fattest fucking ass no, I'm not this looking side for that. of the mississippi i'm not looking for that i don't care it's not, I'm not insecure about it. I don't care yeah. about it. Make better clothes. I don't clothes. have an ass either. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. <laughs> you have a bigger ass than I do. I wear but tighter pants. But that's not what this is about. That's not what this is about. I don't care. Truly, I don't care. Like, that's not one of the things that keeps me up at night. I'm just saying, surely you could tailor some clothes. Who else up at night thinking about they, they, they flat ass? I'm not, is what I'm saying. No, it I said It doesn't bother me until I put the pants on. And it's they're sagging. <laughs> I'm sure I bet you're gonna. I bet a lot of people are gonna be like, "I have the pants for you." I, I hope. bet you're gonna get a bunch of PR from like pants.com. I promise you, I'm not, but that would be nice. I think. I think you pants will. are the hardest thing in the world. Pants. Are I mean, tough. there are harder things objectively. Oof, yeah, <laughs> but no. The keep way going. the way I'm feeling right now in this moment is that pants are difficult to find, and that's pants are hard. And that's where you're I valid. and that's where I stand. Yeah. I like don't my, have one good pair of pants. I've been wearing really baggy pants because um, I think that's just like the thing right now for the, the youths. And I've got my finger on the pulse. It's just like the baggier the pants. The, you know what they say. Yeah. Tell us. The baggier the pants, the closer to God. I can only wear baggy pants to an extent just because I'm so short that what? it looks freakish when my pants are too baggy because it looks like just like a, a little girl wearing a bag. <laughs> a bag? Yeah. How like, do you mean? Like I, they just look like a. I look like I'm hey, in a that, sack. Is that little girl in a sack <laughs> over there? Yeah. We have to save that little girl from you that sack. Really, like I'm. People who aren't short, like it is impossible to navigate the world of pants. Because if they're, first of all, they're never going to be the right length. You could corner this market, by the way. Like you're speaking something. No, there is I, there is a brand for short girls, and that's my one pair of pants that fits really well. Let me tell you. Oh, because they actually did send me one. Jeans for short girls. The oh. perfect fitting denim for petite women. Yeah, hold on. Let me tell you guys. Actually, Nell at at Lie, maybe at Lier, I think it's maybe at Lie. A T E L I E R. They've got good pants for short girls. If any short girls are listening. But it's still hard. This is just going to be like merch for American Girl dolls. (laughs) But it's hard because people who make clothes assume that if you're short, you're stick thin. You know? But it's like... Oh my gosh. That's how much they cost. Oh God, yeah. Of course, Ryan. Oh, they cornered the market. Yeah. They get to, oh yeah. Good jeans are expensive. Well, shout out to Nell, but also you could just have a competitor and make them make them half the price. I don't know what jeans cost. I'm going to be very honest I, with I you. I think like really good jeans, like I would spend 200 on a really good pair of jeans. I can't remember the last pair of jeans I bought. Jeans. Oh no, the word's Je- lost, lost its meaning, meaning completely. <laughs> Shoot. Jeans. 
Let's have move on. I have jeans. I have my sister's my sister's jeans in the garage. That's None of those words. Words that short don't lose meaning to me. Whoa, I lost it completely. Yeah. It sounds like Oh, jeans. It sounds like hub glub. What if I'm talking about a gene mutation on my cell? Does that That's word lose sense. mutation? Yeah. <laughs> well, as a, what? No. Nothing from me. <laughs> Welcome back to Brooke and Connor Make a Podcast. Oh, we we took a week off of the studio because I was on tour and we're back now and we're kind of like having to like reintroduce ourselves to each other. Yeah. I, it feels like even the studio, I feel kind of like, I don't know. I feel like I took leave. Yeah. Even though we were gone for one week. That's it. And now I'm like needing to, even my Kelly Clarkson collection, Wayfair chair. This is not the Kelly Clarkson collection. What, it's just to this me, is this the- is what, that's what I called them. <laughs> To they me, do the, embody the essence of Kelly Clarkson, though they're not a part of the Kelly Clarkson collection. Well, our custom leather chair, I, that doesn't roll off the tongue the same way as Kelly Clarkson collection Wayfair chair. I feel like it does. Not for me. Okay. DSCF. Kelly Clarkson Wayfair chair is easier to you than saying the word jeans? Yeah. That string of words <laughs> c- clicks for me. Okay. Yeah. Um... But it's good to be back. I'm, I'm liking it here. Good to have you. I'm going to forget this before we even get into it, but I had a boxed water this morning. How did it just taste? Cr- it's just cracking me up. It tasted like shit. <laughs> and because water shouldn't be in cardboard. I, Connor? Agree. Like when I move. I, I, I think, I'm so sorry. I support the environment 100%. I do what I can. I do think water tastes the best in plastic. <laughs> I know I'm not going to move forward with that right now because I'm saving the environment. Look at me drinking out of my hydro flask. That's just, unfortunately, it is what it is, though. Sometimes, Sometimes the things that aren't good for you are the best. Like when you go to Mexico and they're like, you can only drink bottled water here. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, you're kidding. No, give me a case of 30, <laughs> 30 case of water. It's, it's, it's all like that is the actual definition of gluttony to like go to Costco and get a pack of water bottles, a 30 pack, and then put them in your fridge. And every time you're thirsty, walk and grab one and then throw it in the trash. Like that's disgusting to me. I even saw someone recently get their hydro flask, open it and put a water bottle in it. I will say if I do use a plastic water bottle, I'm refilling it. Yeah. No, for for a couple times. Yeah. Yeah, Especially the airport water bottle. Like this was not, this was $115. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, But no, I, I, I do I do see you, hear you, and stand with you, RE plastic water bottles. But what I was going to say is I got this box of water, and I'm drinking it. And remember box of water? I think, like, Jaden Smith was the was the person that, like, spearheaded the the box water movement. Mm-hmm. Let me put water in a box. You can, you can't, you can put water in a box. Definition of something. But, like, let's go back to our roots. If I'm moving and I put all my clothes in a box, you know what the last thing I want on that box? Water. water yeah it's a much thinner cardboard than anything else that i've experienced no other podcast is doing it like we're doing it no also you know those friends that just like have the best water in their hydro flask like it's so cold the ice is there's so much ice it's freezing cold there's a specific taste that you can't replicate on your own like i've tried so hard to get my water in my hydro flask to be the same as my friends that have that good good in their hydro flask mm-hmm. can't that's all about they have the magic touch yeah some people's just water systems are better um, but it's not even that it's just like you know how friends food is better off of their plate oh yeah friend like some my one friend jen has always since she was born had the best water <laughs> and there's nothing i can do no matter where she gets it from she could get water from 16 different places. That water is going to taste better than any water that I could ever have. That's like a like a conditioned it's response. Full. It's always full of the top. No matter how many sips I take from Jen's water bottle, full. Unpack that. Yeah. Unpack that. Okay. Okay. What I was going to say about the box water. <laughs> I'm so sorry. There's like a lot to unpack about box water too because one, remember when box water got popular. Do you or not? Uh, like I don't like tumble, I don't remember tumbler the day. days. I remember every everyone with a box of water like holding it up at a festival. Yeah, that was like yeah. the coolest thing because yeah. they put water yeah. in a box. Yeah. Marketing one hundred and one. I don't even know how that happened, but on the back it says, "For every for every box of water you buy, we'll plant a tree." Who's fact checking these people? <laughs> no, you're not planting a tree. 
No, you're not. You are not planting a tree for every box water I buy. Where are you planting this tree? Maybe it's like they're being loose with the words because like technically like let's say you drink the box water and then you recycle it that could be like going towards compost to plant future trees like maybe they're not actually planting the trees maybe the water bottle itself is the tree maybe it's the trees we've planted along the way maybe it's not about the trees we planted maybe maybe the trees we planted were the friends that we have t- yeah. chatted with uh, and 100 no this is it pissed me off because i was like no you're not I want to email them. Okay, call them. Call them right now. Call them right call now. Them, call, yeah. Call Boxed Water. Should I? Okay. I'm what are you going to say? Can you send me like receipts? I want to know where you planted these trees. I want to visit the Boxed Water Forest. Okay. Hey, guys. We want to take a break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, The Farmer's Dog. The Farmer's Dog makes and delivers fresh, healthy dog food right to your door. It's developed by vets, nutritionally balanced, and made from real meat and veggies to the safety standards of human food. The easiest healthy habit to start is one for your dog. That's so true. The Farmer's Dog makes feeding real healthy dog food easy and convenient, and your dog will absolutely love it. I just did an ad for Farmer's Dog on my personal Instagram. Max really loves it. It's like not even an ad, because that's literally the only food he can eat or chaos will ensue it's smart healthy pet food you can feel good about feeding your pup that's why it's time to quit the kibble kick the cans and start fresh traditional dry and wet dog food options are highly processed can use much lower quality ingredients than they claim to and are extremely difficult to portion accurately the farmer's dog isn't just fresh higher quality food they also send the food pre-portioned specifically for your dog based on their unique nutritional needs This makes it easy to help your dog maintain their ideal weight, which is one of the biggest indicators of a full, healthy life. Dogs at a healthy weight can live up to 2.5 years longer than overweight dogs. That's so true. Max was underweight by 17 pounds, and he gained it completely back. And then some. And Yeah, and then we went to the vet, and they were like, he's in perfect shape. And I'm like, imagine if all you had to do was just eat. Abs are made in the kitchen, even with dogs. Okay. A fresh diet has been found to have all sorts of benefits from healthier coat and skin, check, check, to better breath, even easier digestion, and smaller, better poops. A healthy diet isn't just important for humans. It doesn't matter if your dog is young or old. It's always the right time to begin investing in their health. That means more happy, healthy, and full years together. Get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash BNC. Plus, you get free shipping. Just go to thefarmersdog.com slash BNC to get 50% off. That's thefarmersdog.com slash BNC. I want to get my... I think, hey, that's valid. You're a paying customer. Box water. No, you know what they actually say on it? What? For every picture you post of this. There you go. There's a phone number. I'm going headquarters. I'm going to... We're going to... Guys, we're storming the box water headquarters. This is like about to blow the cap right off of the I'm get, I feel like I'm getting down off. to oh wait well, I guess I could type it in from where yeah you guys pulled it up okay oh yeah okay <clears throat> for calling boxed water is better <laughs> if you know your party's extension you may dial it at any time 911 to leave a message for customer service please press 1 for fastest customer service please send an email to hello at boxedwaterisbetter.com for questions regarding a business invoice please press 2 I'll email them I'll email them My when we get off the phone. My phone call anxiety is so bad that like I get nervous when other people make phone calls. I want to go on a brand trip to the box water rainforest. Speaking of brand trips, are yeah. you done with the water conversation? I don't know. I mean, I could go on about box water, but I won't. I'll, I'll let it Do rest. Do you think that the tart influencers get paid in addition? No. They're just going to Bora Bora? Yes. Do you think that they have to post things? Yes. They have requirements? Yes. And I bet it all has to be approved, and I bet we'll get like a lot more content in the coming uh-huh. days, too. You know who said something so interesting? Who? Oh, which, by the way, um, our, our, our uh, Pass That Puss podcast drops oh, uh, tonight. That's exciting. I'm really nervous, because at the beginning I sucked. But he said something interesting. He was like, it would reality be so show? cool to have a reality yeah. TV film crew like at these trips. 100%. I don't know why they're not doing that. Because you see these posts, and then you see, like, so I didn't. Besides Grace O'Malley's content, I didn't even know. I didn't know anyone, anyone went. On the I didn't train. know anyone there. Me neither. But I, I would love to see the behind the scenes of that. Well, it's just funny. Like I've seen like that trip specifically, the Tart trip. That was a trip to end all trips last year. I remember because where'd they go Dubai? Did they go to Dubai on the Tart trip? 
They did. I think so. Wow. Dubai was working behind the scenes, by the way. I don't know what, who's, Dubai was like trying to push Dubai right. for like a long time. No, Every they, influencer was like. Countries going, do that. Whoa. Australia has been doing that. I, I would like brand to go deals to Australia. Australia. Hey, who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? Actually, and then we'll go back to Tar Trip. <clears throat> Someone I just saw went to, went to Australia her first night there. The biggest spider you've ever seen was in her room, like the size of like legitimately a, a, a Volkswagen bug. And she killed it. And it had babies that crawled out in every direction on her ceiling of her Airbnb. I, I would have lived a good life without ever hearing that. Uh, no, that that's enough for me to go to a hotel. I don't need an Airbnb. I don't. I don't actually need the like. My own space, me to be my own lord and and. Why savior. are bugs so scary? I don't know. That but, can't be how God intended it. They're so scary. It's insane. I've been thinking a lot about things that like. There's no way God could have intended this. Like what else? Stomach like. The way that stomach ache? Th yes, to be honest, throwing up specifically. I've been thinking a lot about throwing up recently. Why is pooping not enough? What minute? 14, <laughs> 14 minutes, 14 seconds. Poop. But like, why does it have to come up instead of just go out down? Go out and down. I don't know. There's no reason for it. I don't know. If the reason for throwing up is to get the toxins out of your body, put them out my butt. Like that should be enough. Yeah, that no, should hey, be I, enough. Hey, man, I There's hear you. No way, God intended it to come out. I hear that. you. I wish we could find a customer service line for your butt, but we can't <laughs> right now. I'm just saying, like, there is no point. I it's know the, throwing up is the appendix of the toxin removal system. No point. I haven't thrown up in a long time, so I really can't. I I can't. It doesn't stand bother you though, does it? That's crazy. No, it doesn't. Dang. Like I would rather. And I mean this with every fiber of my being. Have hor like. What are you gonna say? <laughs> I'm curious. I'm trying to say it in the least disgusting way possible, okay. but I don't see that being possible. I would rather have like horrible diarrhea twenty four seven than throw up once. I'd rather have diarrhea for three hundred and sixty five days and throw up one for one day, for one for one time one day. That's yeah. That's a big, that's a big trade off. Like I would rather need a diaper. <laughs> well, you're in luck. <laughs> yeah, I am in luck with my pants. With I'd Jesus. rather need a diaper than throw up once. Um, are you at risk of throwing up or something right now? What no, is, why I'm not. is it right now hitting you? Unfortunately, like I've been kind of relapsing in that emetophobia space. Oh yeah, which is fun. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, but. Yeah, it's hor like it's just like it can't be what God intended. Well, we all we're we're all here for you. Thank you. Speaking of uh, spiders, I killed another spider <laughs> last night. But I ordered. <clears throat> so when I moved, sorry to go back to my landlord ever again. But when I moved in, my landlord was like, "So I like don't believe in toxins, but I did wipe everything down with vinegar." What like that was the cleaning process, and I was like, "Okay, well I'm gonna I'm gonna li literally like fumigate this bitch." Before I move in, whatever. And I, I bleached everything on my own. And then, but like, I've, I've talked about like the spiders and I think it's just because like where I live. But I got gallons of horrible, probably cancer causing toxins to spray every corner of my house. And I did that last night. And that's what God intended. Yeah. Death. Death upon spiders. I'm sorry. Zero but justice for spiders. Sorry. I feel the same way. I feel bad. I do feel a little bad about how I Some, feel, but like. Don't come into my they're, house. They're little monsters. Don't come into my house. They're little monsters. We, we're, we've we like outplayed the spider hate, hate thing. Like they didn't, they have no place to, they don't, they don't need to be in a one bedroom. They don't need to be anywhere as far as I'm concerned, truly. And I'm sorry. They, they need to be in the box water rainforest where that doesn't exist. I'm assuming that's where they need to be. I don't hate boxed water as a company, by the way. I want to be very clear. I just need some proof. How come we've never seen these trees? There are so many companies that promise to be planting trees or doing or matching things yeah. that we just have no proof. Yeah. Remember that one, that bracelet that was like a rubber bracelet and it had sand from yes. the highest mountain in the world and then mud from the lowest. Yeah. Mud the, from the, lowest. Circle, the little circle. Live, look the high bracelet. Yeah. 
can we pull up the live loci? Did the- you ever cut into yours? No. Oh, I, didn't I did. Get one. There's like nothing in it. I couldn't access one. No, it's really? rubber. Brooke, it's yeah, made out of rubber. I know. I want to see their what was their what was their their promise. Mm, what was their thing? What was it their It was you're right. There was supposed to be like mud in it. No, but what was their like agenda? What were they what was their uh what am I trying to say? What was their their se- their selling point? What was their mission? Yeah. This mission, yeah. Okay, donations to date, $9.4 million. Give 10% net profits from your purchase or donated to charity. Okay, so this is a, a rubber brace that you could probably donate more than 10%. Causes, wear your cause, mental health, breast cancer, Hawaii, cancer, Oceania. Okay, veterans. Hey, you guys. This podcast is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time, all in one place, all on your terms. With Fluid Engine, a next generation website design system from Squarespace, it's never been easier for anyone to unlock unbreakable creativity. Start with the best in-class website template and customize every design detail with reimagined drag and drop technology for desktop or mobile. Mm. Stretch your imagination online with Fluid Engine, built in and ready to go on any new Squarespace site. Squarespace makes it easy to sell custom merch and create a passive income stream that engages your audience and scales your brand. Design your products and production inventory and shipping are handled for you, saving you time and money. Whether you sell physical, digital, or service products, Squarespace has the tools you need to start selling online with their online store. Get started with one of our professional website templates with designs for every category and use case. Then customize your look, update content, and add features to fit your unique needs. You can make any Squarespace template do what you want, so your idea, brand, or business stands out online on every device. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash bnc to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash bnc to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That seems nice. It seems nice. And look, look who supports them. One Box tree planted. <laughs> One tree planted. Yeah. No. Oh my gosh. I feel like I've got this, this bulletin board in my house and I'm connecting all these strings. Who are you? One tree planted. Connor, now that you mention it, my bat mitzvah project was planting trees. Did you ever plant a tree? I don't think so. Look! I do not think so. I don't know though. I think it just, I got a plaque that said a tree has been planted in my own honor but i don't was your plaque made out why of was i, I don't, wood no i'm fuzzy on the details yeah look into that because you might be a part of the bigger I'm definitely the bigger problem. fuzzy on the details box water is planting trees in these national forests okay i'm we didn't need to fact check in real time but uh, okay let's see they list the forests okay let's go visit Okay, Wallowa Whitwin National Forest. Give me a break. At least put some effort into making up a fake no, national I've, forest. No, I've been there. Oh. Did you believe that for one second? No. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Wallowa Whitman National Forest in, in Oregon. Oh, it's in Oregon? Yeah. Speaking of Oregon. Yes. How was oh your my tour? Gosh. Yeah, we go over that. Um, so I just got back from tour. Yeah. Actually, I got back on Saturday. It was so phenomenal. It was awesome. I had so much fun. It was great. It was like seamless getting there. Went in. Uh, first two shows were in Seattle. I got into Seattle late, and I'm so unaware of like Seattle and mm-hmm. that. I don't know anything about the Pacific Northwest. Was that your first time? Yeah. That's and a- how was Seattle just in general? I like loved Seattle. Uh-huh. I, the most annoying content on the internet is me somewhere for 10 minutes. Should I move here? But literally, that was me somewhere uh-huh. for 10 minutes. You would actually end it all. Due to the rain. No, I was like, it, it. the sun came out while I was there. But I'm saying in general, should you be there long Nonstop, term? yeah. I was kind of vibing with the rain, though. I did nothing else besides walk to the same area three times. The public market yeah. place. One of the fishermen throwing fish, hawking fish around in his, in his waders was like, I love the podcast. No, you're lying. And throwing a tuna as far as, the, as you could see something you're go. You're lying. No, toss a tuna. Wow, how old was he? 
He was like our age, young. Oh my god, a young fisherman? A young fisherman. Oh, I kind of like am addicted to that. Yeah, I know exactly where he is. Let's head back to Seattle. I've got to get my hands well, we can on maybe this young fisherman. Two, we could check two boxes. One, we could go to the Wallowa Whitman. We could locate that. Yeah. And we could find One Tree Planted yeah. from box water. Yeah. And two, you could climb that man like a, like a I tree. I didn't mean it like climbing him like a tree. I just meant like I'd like to meet the young fisherman. He was tall. I'd like to meet the tall fisherman. Yeah. The tall young fisherman. The tall young fisherman. Um, I did shit the bed a little bit because they actually let you throw the fish if you want to. And you didn't? I didn't. wasn't aware that that Well, was we're going option. back, so. I know. I had a great time. I went to the public market, got some coffee, and like, it was cool. It was really cool. And then I had the show, and I didn't realize this first show, which was um, at the, this place called The Crocodile. Uh, that's, a co- that's a cool name. It was really cool, and it was all crocodile-themed. Damn. And so, like, they had just, like, uh, um, what is it called when they stuff a dead animal? Taxidermy? Taxidermy and crocodiles, like, all over this bitch. Okay. And I was like, okay, well, they stuck on theme. That's nice. Do you know the main difference between a crocodile and an alligator? Brooke, the snout, please. I didn't know. That's, I was gen- That was a genuine question. Yeah, the okay. snout. Cool. And crocodiles are aggressive to everything, and alligators are scared of people. Crocodiles will attack you. Alligators won't. Really? Yeah, for the most part. I didn't know that. Yeah. Alligators are, are Do pussies. you feel like swimming with crocodiles slash alligators, but crocodiles mostly, is as dangerous as swimming with sharks or more dangerous? I would say more. Yeah, I think it depends on the Wait, type of shark. Why don't we talk about crocodile attacks in the way that we talk about shark attacks then? <sighs> the media. Thanks, media. They have their own narrative. They, they have want their to shark agenda. About. They've got the shark yeah, agenda. Yeah, let's focus on the crocodiles. Yeah. Shark attack. Mm, what about croc attack? Completely. I bet there are a lot of crocodile attacks. I in, bet, in and we're just not hearing about them. Because there's big crocodiles trying to keep it, silence keep it, it. on the DL. Damn. Yeah. Yikes. We are exposing so many things today. Yikes. This is a conspiracy theory. Yeah. Podcast. Um, okay, so stayed there. When I went into that room, mm-hmm. the way I almost shit my pants on sight, like it was 350 chairs. Uh huh. And I was like, oh, there's no way I can, you know, do this. They both sold out, both shows. Yeah. It was a phenomenal crowd. It was so much fun. Who were the two people you were saying were there that you were nervous about? What do you mean? Didn't you say that there were like reserved seats that you were nervous about? Who was occupying them? You did. Not in Seattle. Okay, how about in Portland? Not in Portland, neither. I don't know what you're talking about. You posted that there were two spots. Two sold out shows is what I said. No, that's not what I have said. it. I have it on my, okay. my, my Instagram. Let me on see. my on my close friends. I don't friends. remember. Yeah, on your close yeah, friends. Yeah, I said two sold out shows is making me nervous. No, you didn't. You said these two seats. Okay, so I want to remember that there is her truth, my truth, and then the truth. Yeah. And I'm going to pull that, that pull, one up right pull now. Pull it up. Archive stories, just do like close friends stories. Yeah. Two of these is blowing my mind I threw up earlier. Meaning two sold okay, out well, shows. Okay, well, I thought it was the two reserved seats. I posted a picture of about 400 seats. Why would I talk I about I thought you were talking about two seats? of the seats. You posted a photo of seats. Two of these rooms. <laughs> I posted a picture of a room. You, post, you posted a photo of, of, of seats in the room. I thought they were like like Amy Poehler and Tina Fey. Like, yeah, yeah <laughs> at like, the Crocodile in Seattle. Yeah. No, it was awesome. Everyone was great. I did I Have Purse. Everyone responded really well. That was fun. That's fun. Um. There was actually like all the seats sold out and then there was standing room only. So people stood for like 150 people stood for an hour. Wow. Um, and it was cool. I loved Seattle. And then I got up the next day and I drove to Portland because I was I knew that I was going to have like any time to like see anything. So I was like, I'll drive. And that was awesome. I saw like 25 bald eagles like we drove around a lake or drove across like a, on adjacent to a lake for a while. And I saw one go down into a lake and pick up a fish. Like I feel. It's like a different world. This is going to sound really dumb. Okay. A part of me truly like did not 100% believe that bald eagles were, were real for some reason. I like, didn't know that they did that. I know that they are real, but like I really thought that there was a mascot. Oh, the bald people. Bald eagle. No, no, no. I thought like, okay, like bald eagles exist at some, you know, at some point. I don't know. Okay, like part of me like didn't believe that they were real. They are massive. 
How did you see that and say that's a bald eagle as opposed to just a standard eagle? I was eagle? right next to the lake and they're massive and they have bald, they have white they're heads. Bald? They have white heads. <laughs> Can we pull up the different, just like what a regular eagle looks like? What do you think a regular, what are you talking about regular eagle? <laughs> an eagle that's not a bald eagle. What is, there, what is an eagle that it's isn't a bald, a... a bald eagle is not all eagles. I think that's like, like a, yeah. That? Like a oh, gold. a golden eagle, yeah. Wait. There's no such thing as just an eagle. There's not? No. The eagles. The, no, the Philadelphia <laughs> eagles. Is that what They're you're not the Philadelphia about? bald eagles. That is what they are, though. They're referencing the bald eagle. Are it's, they? It's, it's referencing America, I but, believe. Well, it's like an apple. Like I thought a bald eagle was a, a breed, a I, species of eagle. I'm so sorry. Let's look that up because you're ta- you're obviously talking about go birds. Like that's what you're I'm talking saying about? that eagles is like the umbrella term. That's the species. And then there's yeah, subspecies like, like bald eagle. The Philadelphia eagles Philadelphia aren't, eagle. aren't just eagles in general. Like, yeah. It's one, of the, it's one of the 13 colonies, of course. Look at all these eagles. Brooke, please tell me, do you think, do you think that it's the Philadelphia Madagascar fish eagles? <laughs> no, but it looks, by the looks of it, it is the Philadelphia bald eagles. The Philadelphia Philippine eagle? <laughs> it could also be the Philadelphia African fish eagle. That's probably what it is. Just by the looks of it. Um, no. So it's definitely... I didn't realize that the main eagle that we kind of like... When you think of just like the form of an eagle, you think of a bald eagle. Bald eagles are out I didn't realize here that. pulling so much weight and we don't give them any credit. Yeah. In fact, I didn't know they were real. And here's the thing about bald eagles. Are you saying you didn't know that eagles at all were real? I had never seen one, so it's hard for me as someone with an issue with object permanence to believe that those are out there. Oh. That was hard for me. And so when I saw it, I almost crashed my car. I don't know that I've ever seen an eagle. I'm shocked because of, you know, I don't think that team. eagles are native to Philadelphia, are they? Not I haven't seen one. Where do eagles live? I think the Pacific Northwest I think you're is probably what, right. the amount that I saw. Northern California, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've never seen an eagle. Brooke and Connor Make a Podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hey, Connor, what's the first what? thing you'd do if you had an extra hour in your day? scroll on my phone for an extra hour because sometimes sometimes laughter is the best medicine 12 hours isn't enough (laughs) (laughs) i'm trying to get my screen time up a lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time the question is time for what if time was unlimited how would you use it the best way to squeeze that special thing into your (laughs) schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority therapy can help find what matters to you so you can do more of it Therapy has given me tools to navigate my relationship with myself and others, fostering resilience and a healthier mindset. It's a judgment-free space where I've learned to prioritize self-care, set boundaries, and build lasting positive changes. It's an investment in yourself that pays dividends and personal well-being and a more fulfilling life. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash BNC today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash BNC. Can we say where do bald eagles? Where are bald eagles? It says bald eagles in California. So can we type in where the bald eagles at? Tool Lake National Wildlife California. Refuge, which is Oregon. weirdly also where boxwater plants all their trees. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Two of the best places on earth. Okay, well, I saw 25 in the Pacific Northwest. So, birds, hot take, should not be big. Birds are small. They say, tweet, tweet, that's a bird. This is a dragon. What about, like, flamingos? Flamingos are fucking crazy? I don't know. You think? I love flamingos. Peacocks, flamingos. So sorry. Ostrich. I think we should have segments of birds, because eagles are, like, almost reptiles to me in my head. The, the size of them, these beasts. Uh-huh. And the way that they fish just out of a lake, they're up in the air and then they go, I'm going to actually go down to that lake and grab a fish. Isn't a griffin half eagle? Half lion. Half lion, half eagle? Yeah, okay. So that is, you know, they they mythology I was thinking hearing almost, you and taking it to oh, make the so griffin. Someone, has, yeah. someone in whatever, uh, BC, yeah. said that fucking thing is giant. Yeah. That's, a, that's half lion. Yeah. Okay, so I wasn't half. Off. I wasn't far off. No, there is a, like a monstrous quality of eagles. Clearly, they are so effing big, Brooke. And then when you get to flamingos, like a flamingo is a horse to me, in terms really? of animals. Yeah, I don't feel that way. 
Um, okay. okay, cat or dog? The flamingo, a cat or dog? That's a cat. What's an eagle? A a big, freaking massive beast bulldog. Like a not a bulldog, like a mastiff. No, what about a cat? But like, oh, it's a puma sphinx. Oh, yeah. sure, but I think pumas are dogs. <laughs> I know, I know. No one asked to be autistic. Oh my it god, I saw Jack Black this weekend. Oh, that's right. How weird is that? That is weird. I was just walking, obviously. Had to go to Barnes & Noble, pay my respects. Came out, face to face with the Kung Fu yeah. Panda premiere. Oh my gosh, he's really- And just... he was like, for, I mean, he's the greatest guy in the world. He I is. have nothing else to say about Jack Black. He was doing like, he was moving his body in a way that only Jack Black could. Okay? He's, he's so flexible. back bends, he's speaking in a way that I could hear him from a mile away and say, that's Jack Black. His voice carries. His yeah. vo like, the, he was just being he was just being Jack Black. I don't have anything else to say about it. Oh, that's Greatest so cool. guy, you know. I saw a TikTok of him doing his high kick. Yeah, he was doing high kicks. He was doing back bends. He still got it. He still got it. Would you hook up with Jack Black? Yes. Okay. Like, Would no you? hesitation. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yes. Um, if you were to ask. Um, he's married with kids. I bet he's the best father. Best dad. Yeah. Um, okay, so I drove to... Portland after my my show uh -huh. in Seattle. Portland was like a smaller venue. So much freaking fun. Also, I a bunch of people. I did a meet and greet before, and a bunch of people brought gifts, and I left them on my counter. They brought some for you. Oh, they brought a bunch precious. for you. Yeah, a bunch of stuff that's knitted. There was one special little mini purse thing that someone knitted, and there's something inside, but I can't figure out how to open it. So that's what okay. I should have brought. Um, Hopefully we can figure that out together. Everyone was awesome. I literally thank you to everyone who came to the shows. I literally, I still doesn't even feel real. Wow. Like I'm waiting for it to happen, and everyone's so normal and cool. Um, the two girls that got kicked out for being wasted. Like I hope you found what you were looking for that night. What what were they doing? Were there hecklers? I heard there were hecklers. Yeah. How do you deal with that? It's not heckling in the sense like, hey, kill yourself. Right. It's like, no. Yeah. It's like just like feeling called. In that moment to speak out. Do you, does that bother you? No, it, bo it bothers me that it bugs other people uh -huh. in the crowd because it's like disturbing their right. time. It doesn't bother me because I am I have the mic. I can barely hear them, but uh -oh. I just kind of move forward. And then if you don't acknowledge, people kind of stop. I should, probably shouldn't even talk about it on here because I don't want people to feel. Oh, I think that they should not feel bad, but they should stop. Yeah, there's some, t there's some time for where like I, there's crowd engagement. But people, yeah. people were like, a couple people were Feeling like, it was Friday night. It was Feeling Thursday night and Friday night and people were drinking. Yeah. And that makes it fun. There's a bell curve though. Yeah. For me too. Like I I wouldn't drink a, past a certain amount if I'm doing a show or at a show. Do you drink before you go on stage? Like a beer. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that's it. But have you ever gone out on stage drunk? One time. When? Um, at at my Malibu show How that was I host. It? Horrible, and it was right after Dry January, and my my opener, I was trying new stuff, and uh -huh. it bombed, and there were like a lot of people there that I knew, and I was like, breaking Dry January, thank you, bye, and I went to the back, like, in between two sets, like, drank three beers, and oh. then immediately had to shit my pants, yeah. and I, sorry, okay, so we're three poop tallies, and I had to go to the employees of Aviator Nation and say, do you have a private employee restroom, because it's public to, it's shared with everyone, and I was like, I'm going to lose, like, a lot of people supporters here tonight if i can't like hide away and take care of this that's happened to me twice once at the melrose trading post and once at a bar where i like came out of the bathroom after doing something sinful and someone was like oh my god i'm such a fan and i literally i have said like do not go in there like if you have any respect for me <laughs> do not go in there yeah uh that happened to me at june shine at your event we that was all our friends though like what? If someone came up that I didn't really know, and I was like, "Oh, you were like someone get, went in there right before me, and you're gonna want to like I don't know who did that. I don't know what was that, you guys. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> Ooh, like something is insane in there. I really think we should call someone to fix it. But yeah. um, that's the worst feeling ever. But that's what happened. To me. That's what happened to me at, the, at that thing. And then I was like so drunk from three beers and I went up there on stage and actually had someone come up to me at the Poppy event and be like, w were you like drunk at the end of your show? And I was like, yes. And they were like, we could tell. And I was like, thank you for letting me know that you could tell that I was drunk. Yeah. I was like, I, I knew that, but, right. and I was even like, okay, that, 
that opener bombed so bad you guys made me break dry January. And that was the most claps I got. Yeah. That night. And then I had a show last night that was like my favorite show ever. It was like a one just in You're nonstop. Santa Monica. It was so much fun. Kinda got kinda got the hang of it. Every every show, like I I kind of feel bad for the beginning of the tour because every every show that happens, it's more like I think people like seeing you a little nervous. Like I think it's humanizing and sweet. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, listen to this thing that I said. So I was I was in Portland and I was talking to someone at one of my shows and I, I have this joke that like or or someone was kind of drunk and heckling me a little bit and I said something like, Oh, like I think so, something something and it was like not super nice but it was kind of like shut up mm-hmm. and then i felt bad immediately after and i was like it's kind of i meant to say it's weighing heavy on my heart uh-huh. and i said it's sitting heavy on my face <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny that's as good as tubes are tied i know but it's not crazy that just like pops out you really your brain has an incredible talent of amalgamating yeah certain Ooh, phrases good word we've we said that word wrong Oh, well, okay. What did you... Wait, did I just say it wrong again? Amaglamation? I think you're saying amalgamation. Mm. Oh. Okay, we were close. Same thing. They like, should change the honestly, word. Honestly, like, if one, you know better. what we're saying, that's the point of language, to communicate. Period. Yeah. That's it. So if you know what we're saying, yeah, move then, on. That's yeah. it. It's close. Oh, my gosh. But it does increase engagement when we have so many English majors in the chat. Um, it's amalgamation. Yeah. Amalgamation. I'm just saying, like, if we got the point across, yeah, that's it. That's the point. Right. Yeah. Um, oh, I'll say this really quick and then I'll be done. Okay. And then we need to talk about, we need to catch up with you. <laughs> um, I am going to be in San Francisco on Sunday, March 10th coming up. Okay. We have tickets available for the late show in San Francisco and then. There's tickets available for Philly, a couple, on the 12th and 13th. And we'll see you next week. That's all I have. And I will see you in Philly. Yeah, you'll be I'll be in Philly. Will I be at the show? Who's to say? It's honestly like a Russian roulette situation. Who which one she's going to be at? I don't know which one I'll be at. So your guess is as good as mine. I have, I'm feeling like a little bit stressed about Philly. Just because I feel like I've got so much to do in so little time. Yeah, I know. I'm. I am ordaining that wedding in three and a half weeks, but I won't be able to come home in time. So I'm just bringing a tux from city to city to oh city God. to city to wear at that wedding in three weeks. Where's the wedding? Austin. Mm. Okay. Balls, man. Balls. Okay. How are you? Good. I haven't seen you in two weeks. No, I've missed you. Missed you. Um, Connor, I don't think I've done anything. I do think that my hands free reading experience has gotten to the point of getting in the way. That's not shocking. Of my life in terms of leaving the apartment. Yeah. So that's something that I need to keep an eye on. As well as my addiction to my phone has reached a place that it's never been before. When you said that the other day, it's so weird the timing of you saying that you were addicted. I have like clinical tech neck where I couldn't turn my head side to side and I heard a really loud nefarious noise behind me at night in Seattle and I couldn't turn to see what it was I just accepted that if someone's behind me they're gonna get me it's just really scaring me because this is the first time in my life besides when I'm in Vegas playing blackjack yeah that I actively am thinking like you need to stop right now and I can't this episode of Brooke and Connor make a podcast is supported by State Farm when you get a new car or new home the first thing you might think to yourself is heck yeah or I can't believe it or how is this real But what you really want to say is the one thing that can get you the help you need. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. State Farm is there with the coverage you need for your car, your home, and even boats, motorcycles, RVs, and other things that matter to you. Adulthood is already complicated enough. Like for me, I've got a hundred very simple tasks on my to-do list, but instead of simply doing one of the tasks, I just add more things and then look for other things to do except the small, simple tasks. Instead of just knocking them out. Adulthood is hard. All of my simple tasks are like cavities. Like if I just went and got that cavity filled, I could check that off, but I don't. But one of the things that doesn't need to be so hard is insurance thanks to State Farm. With a State Farm agent, you know someone is there to help you choose the coverage you need. 
With so many coverage options, it feels good knowing that you can find what works best for you and your needs. And when you need ways to get help, State Farm gives you options there too. Whether it's in person or on the phone with your local agent or on statefarm.com or on their award-winning app, State Farm lets you do things your way. So when you need help protecting the things that matter most, remember to say, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Like I'll be on my phone and it's like, put your phone down and I physically cannot put my phone down. And also I'm right there with you, I keep I obviously I've been like really addicted to TikTok recently and I keep spoiling all the books I'm reading. Every single book that I have read recently has been completely spoiled on TikTok. So you'd think stop scrolling on TikTok until yeah. you're done the books. I can't. <sighs> and I literally am like just and now in my head, I'm like scroll really, really quickly past anything that looks even remotely book related. Can't. I just spoiled I'm on a new series now. Spoiled it for myself. Spoiled it. Spoiled it. Like I can't, like I know what's good for me and yet I can't do it. It's that really sucks. scary. Like that might be time for that one, that app. One minute, one sec. One second a day? It, no, it goes, are you sure you want to open TikTok and you have to look? I'm going to. That's, no. I can, like, it's literally every part of my body is screaming, put the phone Why down. Why don't you seek help if it's and ruining I, I, other yeah, aspects? It is ruining aspects. You should seek I should see. You should SH. I, yeah. I don't know, but it's really scaring me. But anyway, I watched a lot of Disney movies too, oh, which has fun. been great. I watched Hercules, which I haven't seen since I was a, a babe, mm -hmm. which you don't realize that you don't know the plot of Hercules until you watch Hercules. Let me tell you the plot of Hercules. Tell me. Strong. <laughs> Strong man. Literally, that's all I remembered. And then I watched and I was like, this is not anything that I remembered it being. It, I, go watch Hercules for me. I love that style of um, animation that was just like, is this a book? Like it's flat. Yeah, it was super flat. But go watch Hercules for me and tell me if you remember one second of that movie being what it is. Because I don't, also the plot, like it didn't, there were parts of it that didn't sit well with me actually. You, do you remember, I don't even remember her name, but the girl that Hercules falls in love with? Aphrodite. I don't think that was her name at all. Meg. Her Meg. Meg. But like she was working for Hades and she was like not, like he fell in love with her, but I was like, why? Because she was working for Hades, even though, you know, she sold her soul. She's technically a good girl deep down, but like there was nothing good about her that he fell in love with really. So that was confusing me about Hercules. It was a different time. It was Yeah, but it just like wasn't, I don't know. It didn't it didn't hit really the music though on the other hand. Go the distance is the best Disney one of the best Disney songs. Have they remade Hercules? Mm -mm. Wow. Go the distance and I won't say I'm in love are two of the best Disney songs and they're both in Hercules. I set. cannot wait for them to make Hercules a woman in one year. Oh my god, goosebumps. Yeah. Yeah. I hope they do. Let's get this buff woman some screen time. Let's. But then I watched, okay, so I watched Hercules. By the way, I never like to look up um, the actors who voice these Disney heroes because I'm like, let them just like stay hot in my head. You know, like go the distance objectively. Like I'm picturing the guy singing that. He's dropped dead gorgeous to me. I look him up, this man, Roger Bart. He was actually in a two year long relationship with Trisha Paytas and cheated on her the whole time. Wow. Yeah. The less you know. Don't Google your heroes. Yeah. Do not Google your heroes. Right. Okay, so watch Hercules. Watched Aladdin. Wow. Well. Aladdin and Prince Eric, they really just said, let's copy paste and make Aladdin's skin just like a little bit darker. Right. Yeah. Same exact, same exact prince. Sure. Yeah. That's all I really got from I guess Aladdin. I've never seen any of these besides The Little Mermaid. You didn't watch Disney movies growing up? Hercules to me is the same as Emperor's New Groove. No, it couldn't be more different. I know. Um, no, I, I, I did, but like I never revisited. It's interesting like going back because I had only watched, I watched a lot of Disney movies as adults, but not Hercules or maybe even Aladdin. And it's like, I don't remember the these mm -hmm. plots. Like they're not good plots. They didn't have to be. They didn't, yeah. Their audience was very, like, base level. The music is just exquisite, though. A whole new world. It's probably about the music more so than the, I th yeah. the plot. Oh, my God. It's about the music. That's my favorite genre of, genre of music. Music Power ballad. Musical power ballad. Yeah. And then I watched Cheetah Girls, Connor. O. Why? M. G. What? 
awesome. Awesome. Cheetah Girls 2, more specific. Yeah. Literally one of the best movies ever. The best soundtrack of all time. Strut. I'm unfamiliar. You gotta strut like you mean it. You know that one. Connor. I know. Strut. Party's just begun. I don't. La na na nita na na. Ala na nita na na. I'm unfamiliar with all of these. Oh, na-na. Connor. And I don't speak Spanish. Yeah. Didn't take Spanish in high school, took French. I understand every single word of Spanish in, in wow. every song in the Cheetah Girls, every piece of Spanish dialogue. It's you know, it's a universal language. Wow, they're Cheetah speaking Girls. in tongues. There's, the Cheetah Girls have always the spoken Cheetah tongues. Cheetah Girls, magnificent. I would encourage everyone to go rewatch the best music ever. Also, do you know the names of the four Cheetah Girls? Like, they didn't have to go this hard with the names. I'm not Raven. Galleria. Okay. Dorinda. Okay. Aqua. Yes. Chanel. Those are the real housewives of somewhere. But like that is crazy if you think about like the Cheetah Girls writers room. And it's just like, hmm, what can we name these like four high school or okay, Dorinda, Aqua, <laughs> Chanel. Like, Chanel. Yeah, it's a yeah. choice. Which I love. That was good. I mean, that was a that was a powerful um, I don't know how many movies they had. How many movies were there? Three. But Raven that was, was a not. Pa- that's a powerful three. trilogy. Let me just say, I'm so sorry to say this, but ev- when you lose your lead player, stop. Yeah, you have to stop. You have to stop. What, are you going to kill her off? Yeah. And I the mean, Cheetah Girls? I just like, stop making the movies. Yeah. Like no one, I mean, maybe I'm wrong because I haven't seen it in a long Did time. but like out of the plot? I don't remember do? what happened because I, I didn't, I, haven't, I don't really care to watch it again. Yeah. They but, just replaced her with a different psychic. No, she, she wasn't psychic in the Cheetah I watched a few episodes of That's So Raven last I'm night, sure though. I knew that you did. Like, out of nowhere, <laughs> Which is just, did. it aged like a fine wine. That is a good show. Have you seen um, the girl that plays Chelsea on TikTok recently? Yeah, I actually, I watched her. I don't, she just got something in my eye. I'm sorry. Me too. And she keeps being like, I left Disney for reasons, and then runs away and won't tell anyone. She literally keeps like alluding to some sort of like blow up that happened, but won't say it. Well, Orlando. And it's every video. What's his name? Orlando. Orlando Brown. Brown. I almost. Yeah. Say, I always almost say Bloom. I feel like his career might have flopped. One because he was selling and dealing drugs. I think, but two, he's not in a. He's not in good shape. Two because his name. How can you be that close to Orlando Bloom and not? Ch- he should have been Orla- Orlando. I don't know, or like, or something else, Brown. But like, I feel like when your name is that close to like an A-list famous person, like you're setting yourself up for failure. It just sucks though, because as I was rewatching that so Raven last night, like him and Raven, like their comedic timing is so brilliant. They could have done so much, but yeah. being a child star just like squashed, squa- like kills you, squabbles you. Truly, it's so sad. Yeah, but they really, Raven's still going. What is she? Is she? Yeah. There might be a new Cheetah Girls, Connor. Why? Because I saw an interview with Raven recently that was like her alluding to maybe a new Cheetah Girls. Unless it was a dream. That could be really. Which is possible. Really cool or so sad. It could be. It you know, that's that's like all those Disney, Disney people like starting podcasts and talking about their shows. Mm-hmm. Too. Mm-hmm. Okay. But that yeah, but that's what I've been up to. <laughs> yeah, it's just watching a lot of Disney. Yeah, well, that's always fun. It's yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. fun. No, where I, do you access any of those shows? Disney Plus. Oh, I'm not paying for another service. Rip. No need. But did you watch That's So Raven growing up? Like, yeah, it's it must have. Like, because I'm familiar. Literally, so good. It is. It's a good show. The one I watched last night was the one where Chelsea's trying to save that tree. Do you remember that episode? Oh my God. Old today's Oki. The, today's theme is, is trees. Yeah. Well, she was trying to save Old Oki and then um, found a, a boy that was also trying to save Old Oki that she fell in love with. Phil, played by Phil of the Future. Ricky Ullman. Phil of the Future. Oh my and God. And it turns out he was literally just playing her. He didn't care about the tree. He wasn't a vegetarian. In fact, he was eating ribs at the chill grill. He was just trying to get into Chelsea's. Yikes. Oh my gosh, Phil, come just on. Crazy. Um, but in the end of the day, her friends had her back. That's good. The they only episode did. I remember of That's So Raven is the one where she push turns over into a, a cow. Oh, and I say push over Patterson all the time. They, that came from That's So Raven? That's the best episode of TV. Push over Patterson and the Ghost of Sweet 613 of 
the episode of Sweet Life of Zack and Cody are two of the best episodes of any show. Did you watch the new episode of Curb, by the way? <laughs> yeah, I did. It was pretty it was, that it was, was pretty funny. Yeah. I like eat my words completely that I was nervous about this new this last season. It's been pretty funny. JG Wentworth. Sing it with me. Now, come on, sing it with me. <laughs> he hates her so much. It's so, it's good TV. It is good TV. Ugh. But I've been watching Curb from the beginning as well. Because there's nothing else to I know. There's nothing else to. There's nothing to. else to. Oh, Richard Lewis. That was fucking sad. I miss him you know horribly. What's so weird is in the episode, in the most recent episode, like they were talking six, about for ten yes. full minutes of that episode of Curb, they're like, When I die, I'm putting you in my will. Don't you put me in your will. I'm gonna outlive you for ten years. I was literally like It it does feel like they have just been waiting for him to die. He has for like been, the past three seasons yeah. or however long, like they've just been like writing his like sickness into the story. You know when you see there's certain things you just don't want to see. Like, you'd never want to see someone, like someone's little brother, like my friend's little brothers in high school. I'll, I'll connect this back to what oh, we're I talking about. Oh, I believe it. You don't want to see, like, I don't want to see my, my friend's younger siblings that I think of as 11 graduate college and, like, work in finance. Like, that makes me fucking sick. Like, yeah. you're 11 years old. You should be, like, playing T-ball. Uh -huh. I don't want to see Larry David sad. And he was sad and serious about being sad. About Richard Lewis. His statement. Gut wrenching. Gut wrenching. Yeah. But today he made me cry. Oh, oh my God. Horrible. Larry. Horrible. Oh my gosh. And oh my God. Right, rest in peace. Rest in peace, Richard, Richard Lewis. Lewis. He's, you know, one of a kind. He's one of a kind, truly. Truly. Um, did you know there's a new New York Times game? No. It's What's it called? Is he strands? It's, Wait, what is I'm it? I'm going to eat my words. It's too easy. Once you get, basically, it's just like kind of like a word search and there's an overarching theme of the puzzle and you've got to find like seven words that have to do with the theme and there's one oh, like big word that goes from like one end to the other. Did you think of, of this puzzle? because they were playing Wordle in that episode of Curve? No, I didn't even. Oh my God. I just were... wanted to talk about it. And what's, I don't remember that lady's name. Irma. Then. Irma is like. Oh, got it. And said yeah. it out loud. And Larry's he was fucking so mad. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's, that was yeah. good TV. Okay, so the theme of today. Well, let's play this in the bonus. Pull people over there. Uh oh. I don't want to play this in Maine. Okay. But I got, I'll just can I just tell you how yeah, you play? Let's do it. The theme is I got a dip. And so you have to find like seven words that are You got a what? Dip. Okay. In relation to that. And then once you find one, it's too easy to find the others. Because well, we'll none of the letters can overlap. But yeah, we'll see in the bonus. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. That's exciting. Yeah. It's about time. I saw this tweet the other day that was that was like, um, New York Times like Connections is inducing schizophrenia, like trying to connect all these words that like have no recollection. Like they are literally, it's like it's almost been, a conspiracy theory. Like, okay, what do these things have in common? Nothing. It's been really bad recently. Yeah. Like horrible. That's probably why they added strands. They had to. Oof. Rebrand. Someone stepped in. I have something kind of funny okay, that, I, that I wanted to talk about. I saw this TikTok of this girl saying like, what are things that happened when you were in grade school that like were totally normal for everyone? But looking back, like that was bizarre. And she said, um, I can't remember what she said, but I had one. What? When we won the, oh my God, no, I remember what hers was. When we won our fundraiser, if we sold the most, I think it was cookie dough we were selling. Went and I was obsessed with selling cookie dough. I was so good at the fundraiser, going door to door. When we, whoever sold the most in our school, you get prizes leading up. But if you sold the most cookie dough, you got to spend the night with two friends at the principal's house with her three-legged dog. And she lived in a double wide. And was everyone dying to win? Dying to win. Dying to win and when you hear these responses some of these people like there's so much overlap in some of these responses It is gonna blow your socks off. So I screenshotted a bunch of people's responses ready It this was making me like cry laugh, okay <clears throat> Someone said my elementary school pr principal gave kids birthday spanks and I was so jealous because I had a summer birthday My bus driver, okay, my bus driver would drive by this puddle every day and yell six flags and would easily hit that thing at 50 miles per hour and people would fly. <laughs> we did that on my bus too. 
Okay, this is where it starts to kind of take a turn, if that wasn't enough. My second grade teacher would have kids rub lotion on her feet when she was reading to the class, and kids would literally fight over who got to put the lotion on. My brother massaged his third grade teacher's feet. No, there is... Brooke, that was the overlap. There are so much feet response. Yeah. My school took us on a yearly field trip to the state prison. <laughs> <laughs> this one's so... Are you ready for this one? My sixth grade teacher would have us would have us okay quiz games and one of the prizes was little bags of her cat's fur and we were obsessed <laughs> what mine would probably be the <clears throat> underground railroad simulation that we had to do yeah what did you guys do the underground railroad the underground railroad simulation rock us through that again we always went on like an overnight trip and we were at some overnight camp and then all of a sudden the teachers just turned off all the lights and said, get down, get down. What? We had to completely move through the Underground Railroad. That makes sense mm -hmm. to, to do. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, God, yeah. Also, this is absolutely, like, not okay nowadays. Like, completely not PC. Um, but this was just, like, the reality of the situation. When I was in third grade, we were learning about Native Americans. And we went, we had to go on a spirit quest Oh. To find our spirit animal. They let 20 third graders loose in the forest. <laughs> There's for also hours like, on it. You have you were in so, like the, one of the, probably the most progressive school in America. There is a way to be so progressive that you're actually pretty racist. Connor, that's exactly what it was. Yeah. But they had we had no idea at the time. Yeah, that is Now crazy. looking back like some of the most racist offensive yeah. activities. Well, Underground Railroad Simulation, Spirit Quest. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, our D.A.R.E. officer passed around a bong and a pipe around to the class so we could see what they looked like. <laughs> You'll like this mm, one. I miss D.A.R.E. Me I remember too. being like, I, I will never. never even look at marijuana. Never. What, say, a, what a stupid idiot would put their life at risk. I say yes every time. And I don't even want to. In fifth grade, we took a field trip to Philly. No chaperones, or just fifth grade teachers roaming around Philly. Our teacher sat on a bench smoking cigarettes. Yeah. Was that your school? No. <laughs> were we you... were too busy doing the simulation. The spirit quest in yeah. the, in the w box we in water the forest. forest. Also, did you ever make stone soup? Mm -mm. No, I didn't. What is that? The whole school got together and our science teacher just made soup with a huge rock. I think it was just water and a rock. And it was the most delicious. You ate it? Oh my God. I went back for seconds, thirds, fourths. Like literal, it was like heaven in liquid form. Everyone hang on, hang on, hang on. was dying to eat the stone soup. I don't know what was in it, it was, besides stone and water, but it was like a ritual every year. Stone, probably stone soup uh, day. Like, I want to say that was around the time of the spirit quest. I was going to say, is it? ashwagandha or whatever that drug is oh my god ayahuasca ayahuasca were, were your teachers like inducing an ayahuasca trip probably for your spirit quest that's that's a good hey. thought it'll be interesting when like you're finally able to uncover something traumatic that happened that you don't even remember right now and then you can write a book like well there are so many things like in my life that it's like what happened to me to make me this way and it's like seemingly nothing like i can't locate the source of what happened to me to make things manifest in the way that they do in myself now. But I'm, I'm hopeful that they'll, they're yet to be uncovered. Yeah. Keep them buried. Yeah. I, th I think there's something buried. Yeah. And I think it might have something to do with stone soup. <laughs> I just got one more. Bye bye. In sixth grade, my teacher used to let kids out of lunch detention by eating a cricket that was usually fed to our classroom pet gecko. I want to give. We ate crickets, but at the museum. Oh, at the museum. Yeah. Thank God. I have um, to give a moment of silence for every classroom pet very quickly. May they rest. What horrible lives they lived. Horrible. <sighs> so sad. For what reason does a classroom need a pet? To teach kids responsibility and caring for life. And Whoa, you just reminded me we had a classroom pet. It was a tarantula. And Maybe that's the, the root of all your spider phobia. Yeah. Well, no. Uh, during during um, 
recess, me and this, my, my best friend, Colin, who I didn't remember. You never talk about Colin. I didn't remember him until just <laughs> now. I feel like I did ayahuasca. I, we would go collect bugs during recess uh-huh. and then we got to put them in the, in the spider tank. It, it, I told you it's a learned trait to be scared of bugs. Like we're not born fearing insects. What happened? There was just you one just in my le- bed. No, you learn like through other people being freaked out by them. You osmosis it. I think you're thinking of racism again. No, it's a lot of things. Yeah. I'm scared. But people, arachnophobia no, you know is one of them. You know what? No. You should be scared of bugs. People should be scared of bugs. I don't think so. You, there's a reason we live inside of a, in walls with a roof. Because of bugs. Because of the weather, storms, temperature. Getting bit by bugs, Sh- bugs just shelter, laying eggs in your body and ears. Shelter. Yeah. Shelter from outside factors, including bugs. I think that's like one of the, like a small factor. Malaria. I think there are some bugs you should be wary West of, Nile. but it's like not all. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not scared of, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm not scared of roly polies, but I'm scared of more than 10 roly polies in one area. It's crazy that we don't take more precautions to not get bit by deer ticks. What the fuck? What? What? Deer ticks? Yeah, that's what gives you Lyme disease. Weird. Oh, I don't even, I'm so unfamiliar with what you just said. Really? Yeah, I don't even know, like, all those words seemed like That's random. how you get Lyme. Oh, yeah. A tiny little tick. I'm taking no precautions. I didn't even know that I... I'm just saying, like, that's, like, Lyme is horrible. Like, we should be taking more precautions to, like... I've had deer ticks all, I probably have Lyme, I don't know, but I've had deer ticks all over me when I was a kid. There's so many deer ticks in Pennsylvania. Oh God. But like, it's just crazy that like, I didn't like, I wear sunscreen for the sun. Why was I not wearing deer tick repellent? I don't know. It just feels like you we should be taking more precautions. Yes. Cause Lyme is serious. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, I guess that's a good PSA <laughs> for today. Like, we'll protect yourself from from. I'm just saying, like, we're protecting ourselves from the wrong thing. Because I think, like, if there's anyone else out there like me that didn't even know about this, I knew. How about- did you think you got Lyme? You're just a massive celebrity, and then you have Lyme one day. <laughs> like, that's all. The, the only people I know that have Lyme are all A-list yeah. celebrities. Because it's really hard to diagnose. So you have to have like. Of like really a great lot doctors. of a lot of like tests and stuff. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Everyone like wear pants this weekend. Yeah. And live indoors and be scared of bugs this weekend. Did you not used to get ticks as a kid? Hell no. Oh my God. I've never had a tick. I had ticks everywhere all the time. I'm like, that's not surprising. Well, everyone did. No. Yes. I swear. Oh my gosh. We had tick checks every day at camp. Bro! Yeah. Ew. Okay. Yeah. This is giving me yeah. the heebie-jeebies. The worst is when they were in your head. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, I hope everyone has a great week. I'll see you in San Francisco. See you in SF. And, or uh, Philly. We'll see you in Philly. Ne- uh, we're not recording in Philly next week, are we? Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Oh, and we're recording our episode remote in Philly, together in Philly. That'll be so fun. That'll be so fun. Oh, and then I guess we. Yeah. Okay. Cool. We'll see you. All right. We'll, we'll see, see you. you. I'm excited to do strands. Bye. The oh, yeah. Me too. This week on Close Friends. That's a jacket. Uh, bitch, it's a flannel. That's thick. That's thick. Uh, I want to chime back in. Bitch, it's a flannel. This is bad. I think maybe. But we'll find out soon. I wish I could give my embryo a nose job. I wanted to exit, but like it's happening IRL. So I'm going to try not to talk about things that I don't know anything about. That's even though like that's the point of this thing. podcast. Yeah. Sign up on tmgstudios.tv to watch the full bonus episode.